I'd like to read you something here. And this is a position statement on crude oil transport and storage to the governors of Washington State and Oregon State from concerned Washington and Oregon health care providers. <clears throat> this is kind of unreal to me because I just went to a meeting where I met the most awesome people in the world. Okay, um, <clears throat> the energy companies, I'll see if I can focus in on this, have provided or have proposed measures rail-by-rail rail transport and storage uh, in the states of Washington and Oregon. And, and what I'll just do is I'm going to just read this and then I'll take snapshots so you can read it yourself. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest ports, while there was no movement of oil by rail in Washington three years ago, dramatic increases of oil extractions from the back end fields in North Dakota and Montana and from the Canadian tar sands have occurred with significant increase in oil by rail traffic. And I'm going to tell you why. It's due to them good Mohawk Indians standing the hell up against this. Um, if current proposals are allowed to proceed, the volume of oil by rail coming into Washington would increase from the current 19, 19 trains per week to as many as 137 per week, each with about 1.5 miles long. Each would carry approximately 2.9 millions of the volatile crude to be stored, in some cases refined, then exported to other states. This is a larger daily volume than would flow then the, through the pipelines. The keystone in here, I'll show you that right here, that would be larger than the Keystone XL pipeline, these trains. Can you believe that now? And this stuff is at eighth. First, all right, I, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> This stuff will be, will be, what is it, eighth of a mile, quarter of a mile from our house. And, and it's a kill shot if one was to, to crash. It's, it's pretty much what it's called. It's a ticking time bomb. Okay, here's the risk, though. These are the risks known associated with the oil by transport of oil tank storage and oil export vessel posed to the un- acceptable threat to human health and safety. Now here, I'm just going to read you some of this. Um, first of all, if one vessel in Oregon or Washington was to explode, um, delay of emergency vehicles, the reason is, uh, I mean, proposed routes in Washington can cause emergency service delays in up to 93 towns and cities. And in Oregon, 88 communities currently have an an at-grade crossing cover which unit oil trains um, operate. Okay, back in crude oil is more volatile and flammable than most crude oils. Uh, most is carried in hazardous tank cars prone to puncture spills and fires. I just gotta get to the point where it tells you what it does. Jeez. We, we know they're volatile, but here's the adverse health uh, impacts of these trains. Besides the noise and the horns and all that, um, adverse cognitive performance and increased psychiatric illness have been observed in children exposed to noise. Oil, st oil, oil storage tank spill fires and explosions. Major fires and explosions of petroleum products have occurred at storage ter terminals within the past 10 years. Um, <clears throat> especially in places of earthquakes. Hey, Washington State, Oregon. And we're in a tsunami zone. So here we go. What can it do to you? Well, first it increases oil pollution. We all know that. Look at the tar sands, if you don't believe me. Uh, accounts for the majority of air toxic cancer risk in the Puget Sound area. Increased risk of cancers, particularly lung and breast cancer. Lower infant birth weight, increased risk of respiratory death in the first year of life. Impaired pulmonary development, increased risk of lung disease in infants, children, and adolescents. Increased risk of uh, neurodevelopment and behavioral disorders in children. Increased risk of asthma diagnosis. Uh, exasperation of symptoms and asthma-related hospitalizations. Enhanced reactions to airborne allergens and immune system impairment. And the list goes on and on, I could tell you. Increased risk of acute and chronic destructive lung disease. Sym systematic inflammation. Overall risk to disease and mortality. 
Cancer, all right, increased water pollution, which we know is they, they, the damn companies don't clean up nothing. So anyway, cancer, digestive, reproductive health risks associated with oil contaminated drinking water. Um, reduce short and long-term uh, viability of food sources, including uh, salmon and shellfish. Pollution of tribal fishing um, resources. Increased heat-related illnesses and health care cost increased extreme weather events with associated injuries and death food supply disruption spread of infectious disease uh disproportionate adverse effects on income and blah 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 there was more i know i read more about the health over here um but anyway um we're in the kill zone i'm telling you we went to a meeting tonight we're in the kill zone um, if a train was to crash here down the road from us, we would just say down the road from where I live right now, it would be called the kill zone, the kill shot, because we are not that far from a railroad track. Um, one and a half mile long train of a ticking time bomb. That's unreal. Now, I'm going to ask a question of the Chehalis and the Quinault tribes. Get over your petty differences and get together on this. Um, I'll, I'll, I, I'm maternal. I, I believe in that ma matrilineal bloodline. I'll be the elder who listens to you guys decide your disputes because we all got to stand together and I mean lay across the damn tracks. Now we're the symptom of the cause. That's the tar sands and the stuff happening in, in the other states in the United States of America like Montana, North Dakota and other states. You guys in those states need to stand up and say no you're not doing this in my backyard. Now we're going to suffer the consequences of that shit. You're also getting that bad water and all the stuff it takes to pull that crap out of the ground. Around. Why aren't you standing up? And if you are, do some videos and link them to me. Hashtag, hashtag E. Kenny and Linda, and I will post them everywhere. Please, but you better stand the hell up if you're in a state that's doing the back in oil. Now, I know the Mohawks are doing their damnedest to stop this and have done a very fine job, are now considered number one terrorist in Canada. And the other First Nations have done one hell of a job and are considered the number one terrorist of Canada. Not the whatever boogeyman the TV says. No, it's the internal threats because we're stopping something that doesn't need to happen. Haven't we evolved past this? Taking stuff from the earth, taking stuff from the future generations, polluting this planet to the point where future generations will not even have clean water to drink. Can you just stand the fuck up and say no? I'm sorry I'm cussing here. I went to an awesome meeting tonight. Even wearing my button. Um... I will be on the railroad tracks if they come through here. And I guess it should happen this summer. I'm not sure after a report. I don't, I'm not, I don't know when they would be coming through. I, they're not going to pass through here. I guarantee that. We will get enough people notified. But you people who are letting it happen in your backyard need to do what Nebraska did and get a court injunction and say no. Get with your tribal peoples. They'll help you. Form another CIA, Cowboy Indian Alliance. Nebraska did it. Come on, you guys, everybody can do this. Get with someone. Stop this stuff. Stop it. It's like the vaccine industry. I had measles, mumps, rubella, smallpox, all that stuff. Now they're trying to vaccinate people. They're trying to, it, instead of the Keystone Pipeline, they're doing this. It even gets more oil through. It's their vaccination to the Keystone Pipeline. Do you not get it? And it's going to kill people, and it's going to contaminate beautiful aquifers and kill a rainforest, perhaps. And no one's, well, we're standing up. Now, the solution to the problem is stop getting the shit from the ground to begin with. Now, I'm sorry I'm kind of disrupt, you know, behaving this way right now, but it's just not up to us people in Washington to stop the trains. It's up to everybody to stand the fuck up. If you want your children's children to have a life on this planet, don't listen, listen to the government. They have no power. We the people all together are the power. Say no. Say enough. Say stop. If they don't, stop them. That's all you have to do. From a subversive Native American, this is Linda Little Bear signing off. Peace, blessings, and love to all of you.